everyone, it's Maki here. Today's program will contain spoilers from the story of the movie. We will be discussing some of the content of the movie's narrative. By the way, this isn't directly related to today's topic, but director Mitsuo Fukuto made a brief comment regarding the scene with Isaac and his mother, Aizawiya. During an important conversation, Aizawiya watches Shiho Hanen fears closely. Shiho is a little unsettled by Aizawiya's gaze. Isaac notices his mother's gaze and stares at her. The mother gives Isaac a meaningful smile. I depicted a parent and child communicating with their eyes without words. In the Sea Destiny bonus audio drama, there is a story where Isaac's mother is looking for a mate for Isaac. Many fans must have been curious about Isaac and Shiho's relationship. What impression did you get from the scene depicted in the movie? Now let's talk about today's topic. The first volume of the novel version of Gundam Seed Freedom has been released. The novel contains content and psychological portrayals of the characters that were not covered in the movie. From it, let's explore the stories that are likely to be depicted in the new anime. You will find content that has been discussed in previous programs. These are elements that director Mitsuo Fukuda mentioned in an interview when he said the script is already finished. It is about the Freedom Heist incident. Let's analyze what this incident was about based on the information that has been released. In the movie, the Freedom Heist incident is only briefly mentioned. The first reference is a line from Kakali year of her half a year before the events depicted in the movie. We were helped by the Foundation during the Freedom Heist incident. This indicates that the incident took place six months before the events of the movie. In the novel, Lars Klein is portrayed as being suspicious of the Foundation in the movie. The timing of the Foundation's proposed plan to capture Michael, the leader of Brook Cosmos, is seen as too convenient by Lars and Cavalry. Lars is similarly skeptical about the Foundation's intervention in the Freedom Heist incident. She thinks it was extremely incongruous timing, and the capabilities of the Black Knight Squad used were astounding. The Freedom Heist incident is described as a terrorist act in which the storm Freedom Gunnam attacked a ground facility. It was a significant incident in which a powerful mobile suit was hijacked and used for terrorism, compromising the political stance of the peace monitoring organization, Compass. The Foundation handled this incident brilliantly earning significant favors from Compass and Orb. In the movie, the Freedom Heist incident is depicted in a brief flashback by Shin Asa. This scene shows the strike freedom being damaged by an attack from the Black Knight Squad. In the novel, the incident was resolved when the Black Knight Squad shot down the freedom. It seems that the reality of the incident was that the strike freedom was hijacked, used for terrorist acts, and then suppressed by the Black Knight Squad. Who was the perpetrator of the freedom heist incident? Neither the movie nor the novel states this clearly, however, I believe it was Leonard Bowie. He appears in the novel Moonlight Valkyria, which is a special bonus to the movie. He is introduced as Agnes Jibunak's lover. Leonard is a character who has a past where his family's colony was destroyed by the requiem used by Logos. It's mentioned in the novel that he once expressed to Agnes his desire to pilot the freedom just once. Subsequently, using her parents' influence as government officials, Agnes manages to get herself and Leonard assigned as pilots for the new freedom transport mission under the command of Isaac Joe. 
The bonus novel ends with a scene of Agnes and Leonard embracing. At that moment, it is described that Leonard had a cold, twisted smile mixed with irony that Agnes could not see. In the novel version of Seed Freedom, it is mentioned that Agnes was terribly betrayed by her lover. It's possible that Leonard betrayed Agnes and acted as a terrorist. The hijacked Freedom is said to have attacked a ground facility. It's also possible that Leonard took revenge on the Blue Cosmos related facility. What exactly is the new Freedom? Is it a modified version of the Strike Freedom or could it be the Rising Freedom? That detail remains unclear. Considering the scene where the Strike Freedom is defeated by the Black Knight Squad, it could possibly be the Strike Freedom. However, it's uncertain whether a Compass, a joint organization of Saft, the Earth Alliance and Dope, can publicly operate mobile suits equipped with nuclear engines. The nature of international treaties after the end of the war in Sea Destiny is unclear. It seems unlikely, however, that the end of the war between the Zoft and the Earth Alliance forces will lead to the lifting of restrictions on nuclear weapons. The Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice are more likely to be powered by battery-powered engines, not nuclear engines. In the movie, there's a scene where Hilda destroys the damaged Immortal Justice with a beam rifle, causing an explosion to evade enemy fire. The explosion was smaller than would be expected from a nuclear missile. Also, Shinasa had escaped from the Immortal Justice's cockpit at the time, and a nuclear explosion at close range would have been extremely dangerous. Hilda, an experienced ace pilot, probably made a calculated decision to destroy the Immortal Justice. Director Mitsuo Fukuda has mentioned in the past, Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice are officially adopted mobile suits. It's highly likely that they are officially adopted Gundams conforming to international treaties and not utilizing nuclear engines. While the Rising Freedom and the Immortal Justice are mobile suits enhanced with dwarf technology, campus headquarters are located in the plant. The new Freedom being transported by Isaac Jewel may be the Rising Freedom. Isaac may be transporting the Rising Freedom and Immortal Justice as mobile suits prepared for official use by Campus. In the movie, there is a notable conversation between Rinser and Daniel during the scene, where Shin and Shura are having a sword play match. They say maybe the Campus isn't as important as we thought and that was recently proven. This statement could refer to the mistake of having freedom hijacked by terrorists. It could also mean that Kior and other campus pilots were unable to neutralize the hijacked freedom. In addition, Laos is wary of the Black Knight Squad's advanced capabilities. It's possible that Kira piloting the strike freedom was in a tough spot against Leonard. If the Freedom Heist incident were to be made into an Annie, it would be necessary to show Kiro actively involved in the Gunnam. Commercially, it's likely that they would avoid a scenario where Kiro is not flying a Gunnam. In such a case, Kiro would pilot the Rising Freedom to confront the Strike Freedom. The fact that the kidnapped Freedom was the strike Freedom was already depicted in the movie. A showdown between the rising Freedom and the strike Freedom would certainly surprise and excite fans. It would also be effective for promotional videos. But will Kira Yamato's rising Freedom be defeated by Lena's strike Freedom? Leonard is a military officer who wears the red uniform of Saft. His skills may be high, but it's unclear if he can take full advantage of the Strike Freedom's capabilities. 
In the movie, Kira is portrayed as troubled and unable to fully demonstrate his abilities. Perhaps the same situation occurs in the Freedom Heist incident. Also, the members of the Black Knight Squad have abilities that affect the human psyche, such as reading memories or creating confusion with illusions. If the Foundation is manipulating the Freedom Heist incident from the shadows such an intervention may have been carried out, it's possible that the Black Knight Squad easily neutralized the strike freedom that Kira fought. This would explain the comment about Campus not being a formidable organization. However, there is a high possibility that Kiro Yamato will play an important role. This is because Agnes considers Kiro to be a worthy partner for her in the movie. A scenario where Agnes falls in love with Kiro because of his impressive actions is likely. The Freedom Heist incident is a very mysterious and intriguing event. I think it has a high chance of being made into an Annie. As we discussed in a previous program, one reason for this is the movie's strong box office performance. In addition, a large number of computer graphics models have been created for the movie. Let's look forward to the possibility of Freedom Heist Incident being produced as an Annie. See you in the next program!